Hello there, this is Will from Stacks for Stacks. It's fairly quiet this afternoon, Friday afternoon, so I thought I would put together a quick video about the intrinsic stack, uh, which might be of use to you if you're thinking of using this stack for new and upcoming projects. Um, intrinsic is very much based around CSS Grid. This is a brand new technology which has arrived on the scene probably about 12, 18 months ago, I suppose, and has been quite rapidly adopted by all the major browser vendors. And it's very exciting because it offers a completely brand new way of building web pages and laying out different components. Um, it overcomes a lot of the traditional problems faced when using either you know much older tabled layouts or floats or um, absolute positioning, for example. Um, that of which can be quite tedious to work with in uh, responsive setups. So Grid has kind of come about to merge together all the best features of previous ways of uh, presenting content on web pages, um, but adding a lot of exciting new features alongside. Um, this page is called CSSTricks.com, and they put together an entire article all about CSS Grid here. Um, even if you don't understand a lot of what's been discussed here, it's still quite an interesting read. Um, there's quite a lot of examples to look at and code snippets to uh, to take a look at. And some of the things here, like um, for example, grid template areas, um, is something which we actually do in the intrinsic stack too. So uh, yeah, all quite inf all quite informative and uh, useful to know about. And indeed, you know, if you are thinking of still being a web design or developer in five or ten years from now, um, I'd strongly urge you to at least um, learn the basics of CSS Grid because, like I say, it's such a formidable new technology. Um, a lot of individuals and smaller web design agencies are already turning their eye towards using CSS Grid for building um, websites for their clients. So this is very much something which is here to stay now. It's well supported by all the major browser vendors um, and is quite a revolutionary way to, to build pages and quite exciting from that perspective. Um, so what happens here is typically I get sent a mock-up for a new web design like this from the designer. Um, we typically build to a, a, a grid system. Um, this one here is the, the bootstrap grid system. Um, I can actually turn off the bootstrap here just by toggling the layer. The bootstrap grid here, I can just toggle on and off. And initially, you know, you might look at a design like this and think, well, hang on a minute, that looks pretty simple. I reckon I could build that using existing stacks. But when you start to look at a design like this a lot more closely, you'll notice um, a couple of issues here. Firstly, we've got quite a lot of grid areas which kind of mesh together. Um, they're not all sort of evenly distributed through the page, both horizontally and vertically. Um, some of them sort of encroach down towards others and others are sort of chopped off by other ones and, and such like. Um, so this is quite a, a difficult um, layout to, to build. You'd have to, I think, you couldn't use normal column stacks for this you'd have to build something with sort of absolute positioning and that gets extremely tedious and, and painful to work with in a in a responsive setup the other issue here is that each one of these cells has unique styling applied some of them are just a, a css background image like the wine bottles here and the grapes on this side but others contain text um, some of them need the text centered like this quote here so the text actually needs to be centered within the cell and some of them contain extra content like buttons which need to be positioned either at the top or bottom. So quite quickly something like this is going to become very difficult to build in Rapid Weaver. Two options I would probably have here is I could either go back to the designer and say hey look can you give me something easier to build with please to which you'll probably just have me to get lost. Um, or I can roll out the intrinsic stack in Rapid Weaver and have a go at building it. And that's exactly what I've done here today. So if I switch over into uh, Rapid Weaver now and just preview this page in front of us, what you'll see is that um, I've been able to recreate this um, design mock-up from Infinity Designer in Rapid Weaver um, very, in a very similar way to how it was presented to me originally. You might look at this at first glance and think, well, that's just an image he's got on his screen. But actually, this is all text I can select for real. And even the text up here on the right-hand side has been, where it's been rotated, I can still select for my mouse. And there's buttons I can click on. And there's social buttons at the bottom here and an email form and things like that. So this is all very much a, a true web page, which is alive and well 
um, built just with a single intrinsic stack. In order to use the intrinsic stack, what you want to do is just drag and drop a single copy into a page. Uh, we don't typically support multiple versions or copies of intrinsic in the same web page. And then within the settings for the main intrinsic stack, we can set some global variables which will get applied to all the different items within our grid. And there's a couple of advanced options like the ability to specify maximum width that we want the grid to grow to. And we can also um, switch on something called X-ray viewing mode, uh, which I'll show you in just a second. We create our grid by using breakpoints. Now, CSS Grid by its nature is already a very flexible framework to build with, so typically you might not need as many breakpoints as you might want with a traditional sort of column-based layout. Um, things tend to flex and reflow quite well in CSS Grid. Um, I typically tend to try and stick with just having a mobile breakpoint and one for desktop, um, and typically that's, that's good enough for most page designs. I can actually show you if I go back and preview this page in Rapid Weaver 8 and use the Simulate tool in Rapid Weaver. And we can just have a quick look at what this completed page would look like on, for example, an iPhone here. And you can see we've turned off things like the text rotation of our slogan text, um, reduced the font size of the, 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 the header up here, and we've just more or less reused all the same content again but repositioned it and resized it a bit just to sort of reflow and fit the screen space that's available to us and all the content is still available on the page here um, or accessible for a person on an iPhone or a similar device um, to go in and view. So yeah that's basically how our breakpoints work and what we can do is we can actually um, tell the web browser how we want our grid items arranged both horizontally and vertically. Um, this is a little bit complicated. I'd say this is probably the most complicated aspect of the intrinsic stack. Um, but if you go onto the product page on the Stacks for Stacks website, I've tried to put together quite a good um, summary of, of roughly how these options work. And again, you'll get um, some units of measurement like this 1FR, which stands for one fractional point, um, which are probably going to be new to you. Um, but it's nothing to be afraid of really. There's, there's quite a lot of new units of measurement being introduced into the CSS specification at the moment right now. Um, and some of these are very useful for particularly uh, grid setups. And then what we do is we actually use what's called a, a grid template area. So we actually reference our individual grid items and tell the web browser explicitly where they need to be positioned on the page. In Stacks and Rapid Weaver, it's a bit complicated to visualize how this grid will be laid out. So what I tend to do is copy the template area to my clipboard and I'll just go into a normal um, code editor and if I paste this in and I'll just try and increase it in size you can begin to see some patterns emerging here in our template so each row starts with a quote mark and ends with a quote mark and we just use singular letters to define the names of the areas so the area at the top here area A spans all the way across except for one grid item at the end. Uh, we've got a grid item here called C, a grid item here called D, a grid item here called E, and then we've got a grid item here called F, which instead of going across the page actually descends and goes down the page. Um, so yeah, that's, that's typically how it works. You, you've got to kind of visualize it a bit like a, a simple floor plan for a house where you just have sort of squares or rectangles sort of named kitchen, living room, dining room, hallway, landing, things like that. Um, CSS Grid can do squares and rectangular shapes. It can't currently do more complex shapes like a, an owl shape. Um, but I have read that there's uh, some new work being done on the CSS Grid specification which might, might well introduce that in the near future. So it's a case, I think, of, of, of keeping an eye on that because that might be coming soon. But for now, we're just restricted to only being able to use sort of squares and rectangles in terms of uh, grid area shapes or grid item shapes. So let's just switch back into Rapid Weaver again now. And what I've done, you see, is I've gone ahead and I've added all my grid items a little further down here within the stack. And we give each grid item a letter, which of course corresponds with its template area. So this one's A, next one down is B, next one is C. 
some of these like this um, area called C this item here called C doesn't actually contain any content it's, it stacks is still telling us to drop stacks here but you can see over here on the right hand side in the stacks panel um, what I've done is I've added an image here of some bottles of wine um, so that is that is the, that grid area that grid item complete and of course we can add other things like padding lots of different alignment changes and such like and all these will override the, the global settings I originally set on the main um, intrinsic stack um, so these offer a good way to override and customize each item on an individual basis whether it's content alignment or the size of the item padding and background and things like that um, so it's an extremely flexible stack to work with there's a huge amount of design potential and I mean we've got things like support for um, shadow effects and even some simple animations like mouse over effects um, those are available for selection here which have been borrowed from the image wizard stack so a lot of functionality available and offered here in the intrinsic stack and we can also add extra layers that is particularly true of I'm just trying to find it now this item here D where we wanted to put a, a button on the bottom um, for shopping online and we wanted to break that away from our existing content which is going to be floated towards the top of the grid item so I just switched on the option here for um, an additional layer and then that breaks us outside of the normal alignment options and you know that's, that's roughly what our completed page looks like now of course what I could do because this is you know almost a complete web page in itself I could just add a navigation bar at the top here particularly if I was using a theme like um, Rapweaver skins um, so I can just go into my library and, and pull out a gator stack for example and drop that straight into the page and if I go back and preview my page now what I should find is I've already got myself now a navigation bar at the top of the page which I could restyle there you go you see so I've got navigation links now on my web page and I could just repeat the same process for other pages I was building perhaps just changing the, the shape of the grid on other pages you know this one would be quite good for a landing page or a home page I think this is what the client wants it for just a simple landing page but equally so I could reuse the same stack on other pages and just change the content shown in it and you know change perhaps the position of some of the items I've put together um, a couple more examples here so we've got um, a mock fashion website I put together and this does use some of those mouse over hover effects and again this would be a great example to use on a website landing page because of course you can then set these as links to other pages and we've also just finished work recently on a page design for a small local architect so again you know this one they just wanted a very simple landing page I can build that with a single intrinsic stack as I've done here I can set the items as links it wouldn't be difficult to set the items to open within um, a light box effect such as top box or pro gallery um, so nice and simple from that perspective and then just the one thing I want to show you which I think is quite a nice feature of intrinsic is this x-ray viewing option that we've got so traditionally you know when I've found I've been building grids things have tended to get quite complicated quite quickly uh, so what I've done is I've actually added into intrinsic this special uh, x-ray viewing mode which we can just toggle on here in the, in the stack settings and then if I go back and preview my page now what it does it, it still renders the grid on the screen um, but each item of the grid now shows its um, identifier and this offers a very quick way to visualize what you've created so far and be able to go back and, and change things again so for example very quickly the the barrels in the cellar here if I wanted to go in and change that picture now I know straight away that that's grid area out so I can jump straight back into edit mode swap the picture out very quickly and uh, make modifications that way uh, so yeah it's a quite an exciting stack it's certainly very different to what you might have used before in rapid weaver um, it is quite complicated to use it does take some practice to, to learn and to use but honestly the, the, the results at the end of it are absolutely fantastic it is a, a really nice stack to build responsive and modern web pages with 
browser support is very good um, you know with the exception of Internet Explorer which really does struggle to, to support stuff at the best of times really um, you'll find browser support for intrinsic is very good in web browsers that don't support CSS grid everything just degrades back to a single column um, and each item sort of has an auto height so there's never a danger that somebody on an older web browser coming into your website is going to see nothing there's, there's always going to be something on the page it might just be it gets you know degraded down a bit it's not quite the, the wow experience that you can see on the screen here in front of us right now so I think that's all there is really to explain about um, the intrinsic stack um, I will try and put some of these demos up on the demo site for the Rapid Weaver skins theme because both intrinsic and Rapid Weaver skins work together really well you know they are add-ons almost made for each other I would say um, so yeah we'll try and get some more demos up for you to to look at and of course you'll at that point you'll be able to download these and look at them yourself and even use them if you want as, as a blueprint for creating your own web pages with um, so yeah it's a good stack to use I recommend you uh, you download it and have a play around with it so I think that's all for today um, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to chatting with you again soon